Welcome to the finance show of Tip TV, sponsored by Trade Signaler. I'm joined today by Adil Fazal, who's founder of Intermarket Analysis. How are you, how are you today, Adil? Hi, Zach. I'm well. I'm well. Enjoying the uh, what's well, a one-way street on the financial markets at the moment, or the stock market? Um, certainly is. Is there an end? It certainly is. I think last time I came, I talked about the reflation trade. It certainly is underway. Um, I think a lot of people were caught out with the uh, BOE additional QE. Yeah. I think we all expected the rate cut, but the additional stimulus. A lot of individuals were certainly caught out by it, especially with Mr. McCafferty as well, who's on a U-turn. Apparently he was a hawk and now he's on a full U-turn and, and he wants additional uh, QE as well, and potentially more rate cuts down the road. I he's think capitulated. It certainly seems that way. It certainly seems that way because I think the only, um, shall we say, uh, central bank in town at the moment is the Fed who wants to raise rates. I think overnight RBNZ as well. They cut rates too. And, uh, but do the Fed really want to raise rates? Because they just keep coming up with some excuse. You know, it's certainly is. It certainly does seem that way. Leaves on the line types of excuses. Well, it certainly is that way because this week, I think this week and last week, I've been shorting the Aussie and the Kiwi, and I've been stopped out quite consistently, uh, which really is quite frustrating, given the fact that we post NFP, everybody expected the rate hike, yeah. and we I think we got a productivity number from the US. I think it was. Uh, Monday or Tuesday, if I can recollect, and all of a sudden the, the dollar has lost all its post-NFP yeah. gains, and it has literally capitulated, like you just said. So it certainly is, I think, the fact that everybody is, does not believe the Fed will, will raise rates, and that's, that's a worrying sign, really, especially when they promised four rate cuts, and now it really is it's in jeopardy right now. So, um, so yes, uh, but again, it's, it's a race to the bottom. Everybody, famous currency wars, and it certainly is in full motion. Right. I mean, in a way, the Fed don't need to because, I mean, against uh, sterling, you've had that massive drop um, as well. I think we're below, well below 120, 130 at the moment. Um, well, I think, I think that's the reason why the Fed is, is holding because they realise that everybody else is trying to debauch their currency, mm. which in turn is a rate increase in and of itself. Hence the reason why they're constantly feeling the need to pause yeah. and use excuses for, such as Brexit and so on and so forth because everybody wants to export deflation. So it's past the baton of deflation. Yeah. And who wants to? And we all know with the Chinese, obviously I think it's the anniversary of the yuan devaluation as well uh, this week. So yes. again, and that sent shudders through the, the financial system as well. So it's reminiscent of that really at present. And it's all about who wants to embrace deflation and I don't think anybody wants to at present so that certainly seems to be the theme right now and that's what's sending equity prices higher because if everybody wants to debauch their currency it basically guarantees stimulus, excess liquidity, it means the Fed is on pause uh, and obviously emerging markets are going higher and that's why equity markets are consistently feeling the need to move higher although having said that I think it's very important we have a chart here of the Let's see. FTSE 100 yes uh, this is an interesting chart because uh, we had a, um, a slight problem this week with regards to BOE buying bonds, I think yeah. it was Monday or Tuesday. So again, that's certainly starting to present a problem with the ECB as well, certainly presenting a problem. Uh, so again, that's going to be interesting going forward, whether or not there's sufficient amount of bonds such as... No, the no the sellers if people think that uh, rates are going to go lower. Exactly, exactly. So I think that's the new... A problem on the horizon, especially if you go to the weekly chart of the FTSE, yeah. you can see that the FTSE has uh, tremendous resistance around the uh, 6, 8, or 6, 7, 80, if I can recollect. Yep. Um, so, sorry, 6, 8, 70 at present. So, there is that uh, horizontal resistance yeah. going back historically. So, we are going to fire a face turbulence in this zone here, okay? So, again, given the fact that oil, uh, given the oil supply data as well, oil has started to face some resistance. Uh, the gilts certainly are flying high. Okay, uh, the GBP or US uh, the sterling certainly is starting to find some support as well. It hasn't made, hasn't tested the, the previous low. It looks like it wants to make a higher low. So again, it's going to be interesting going forward. So 6870 is a turbulent zone and it will be interesting to see how the markets react here because if you look at the US markets, again, I trade via intermarket analysis. I run my uh, live analysis service on the Trade Signal app. So yeah. you can certainly gain access there at tradesignaler.com. And uh, my channel is Intermarket Analysis, and you can certainly gain insight into my uh, live day trading there. Okay, so I send my signals and market updates. So live day trading, which markets? I trade, predominantly I trade the equities, so the FTSE, yeah. the DAX, the CAC, and the Eurostox. 
and the Nasdaq and the S&P in the US session. So it's really the European and US session. And the, uh, the currencies of choice I trade are the Euro USD, the Kiwi dollar and the Aussie dollar generally because they tend to be more obedient to TA. The big, the, big, the, the, the big markets, basically. Definitely, yes. I mean, what do you make of the S&P at the moment? Because it's, uh, the S&P you know, is interesting because the S&P is starting to stall and showing signs of resistance along with the Russell 2000. Okay, so again, it certainly is showing signs of stalling. And over the last two or three days, what's been interesting is that the, the weakest link has been the S&P 500 as opposed to, and even the FTSE to a large extent as well, as the oil market certainly seems to have come off. Uh, given the fact that uh, we had this potential meeting, uh, Russia, I think, and some of the OPEC members have, have reconvened a potential meeting. So, again, uh, the oil supply data, again, it, we all know it's a inflation rally. So oil prices certainly are a, uh, an instrumental um, variable in this rally at present. And again, if oil fails to move higher, it fails to create inflation. And therefore, if oil moves lower, it equals deflation. Deflation equals central banks increase stimulus. And vice versa. So really, so that's your intermarket analysis really just spinning the plates of different markets. Yes, definitely. The bond market obviously is a key. Again, it can't be as reliable as it was historically due to the fact that central banks are <laughs> manipulating it as such, uh, such as the BOE failing to buy obviously additional bonds, etc. Uh, and really, I think the FX markets really give you a better clue right now. It's more of a natural market, organic market, and uh, commodities very important as well, and equities at present too. So. I am seeing a resistance in the NASDAQ, which is interesting because I always project the NASDAQ, given the fact that it's technology-led with the DAX. Uh, and I am seeing exhaustion in the NASDAQ at present because the biotechs and the semiconductors are potentially putting in a top or an exhaustion pattern. Uh, and certainly looking to, uh, uh, I'm currently short the NASDAQ before I came in here, uh, short the NASDAQ from the 4795 zone, uh, certainly looking for a move down or a move lower. Uh, and given the fact that Apple, if you look at the chart, Apple has closed its gap on the daily chart of Apple. Uh, it's famously known as the Apple DAC, <laughs> the NASDAQ. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yes, the, the Apple chart certainly has closed its gap. Again, we all know it's very heavily weighted towards Apple. Uh, also, the likes of eBay, Amazon, um, Alphabet, etc. The uh, Facebook as well. I think they had a report in terms of their uh, targeted advertisements, etc. Certainly a, a decline in revenue there. So, again, looking for weakness across the NASDAQ. Again, NASDAQ is a good harbinger, a leader for based on intermarket analysis. Well, it just reminds me of the DAX, actually. With the DAX, uh, we the had, DAX that, had a gap. I mean, this, you know, we've had, we had a resistance line break, which uh, yes. I think you probably noticed as well. But let's just say it was... I wouldn't really focus think, on the... Is, is, it, is it broken or not broken? No, I would focus on the gap at 10,740. There's a yeah. gap on the daily chart at 10,740 yeah. on the DAX. And that certainly is what was attempting to be closed. Same with the Euro stocks as well, at 3,038, 3,040. Uh, was a gap as well. So really it was more of a technical picture. Given the light volume environment as well and liquidity driven market, yeah. etc., it certainly is attempting to close those gaps before it eventually reverses. So there's still the possibility of it fails around here and then... Uh, there's a, it's certainly looking for weakness, yes, because um, the Nasdaq is certainly showing signs of weakness. The S&P and the Russell are showing signs of weakness. Those are our technical analysts out there. Certainly have a look at the chart of the Russell, uh, the S&P 500 too, okay, very important. Also, the Wiltshire 5000 is very important to, to look at as well. And certainly from my perspective, showing weakness. Uh, also, the FTSE, I mentioned the key resistance point there as well, given the fact that oil prices have started to head south now at present, given the excess oil supply. I think OPEC actually reduced their potential forecast as well. So uh, again, it's from my perspective, the dollar, from my uh, understanding right now, post NFP, also we had the US jolts numbers as well that were pretty strong. The only slight weakness that we had was the productivity numbers, I think, this week, which sent the, uh, the dollar lower and obviously a lack of faith in rate cuts, rate increases, sorry. I do believe that the dollar is really poised, it's in a position right now to certainly move higher, okay? Uh, and I think that in and of itself, rate hike concerns and a hawkish Fed going forward certainly are going to cause some problems in the economy. On that markets. note, Adel Fazal, pleasure as usual. Um, as always, founder of Intermarket Analysis, thanks for coming in You're today. Welcome. You're welcome. We'll be back after the break.